Welcome to In Edina, a program about the people, places, and activities here in the city of Edina. I'm your host, Lily McDonald. We're on location at 50th in France in some of the hottest property in town. And joining us to talk about it, Gene Hoagland, thank you very much for having us. Well, welcome to 5000 France. We're delighted to have In Edina. We are really excited to be here. This is the model. You're going to show let's, it, and let's I take can't a look. wait to see it. Let's take a look. Wow, this is really spacious. Uh, this hallway is gorgeous. Lillian, this is our Fairfield model, which is 1,900 square feet. We have units that range from 1,600 square feet to 3,200 square feet, nine different models, 23 units. And, you know, we paid major attention to quality of wood and so on, and especially to sound attenuation. It's really quiet. We want to keep this a very quiet place that feels like home, in spite of the fact that you're in the middle of the city. It certainly looks like home. Let's so, take a look. I can't wait go to take see a look. inside. Well, this is a very open area, which was perfect for entertaining. Well, it is, uh, you know, with the big windows facing out to the balcony or a terrace, uh, out there you have another 9 feet by 20 foot space so that you can use in the summer. Marvin windows. Marvin windows, hardwood floors. Beautiful. A fireplace in every unit is uh, standard with us. And just keeping the space wide open, cove ceilings, hard, uh, solid wood doors, and uh, wide base and casings. And tons of storage area all around, which is just We have as storage important. all over in every unit, in addition to storage down in the garage. Mm -hmm. And we have so, an underground garage parking. I think. That's right. Everybody has indoor heated parking. Mm -hmm. What's nice so, when you come up here in this room, too, is you have the dining room area, you have the family room gathering area, and then you have the kitchen, which is really nice because nine times out of ten, you're having conversations with people across the, both rooms. It's a gathering area. So let's take a look. I love the fact that there are so many cabinets in here. Well, every kitchen or every different model has a little different kitchen layout. Mm -hmm. Some of them have a center island. Some mm -hmm. of them don't. Uh, and the layout is a little bit different. But there are things that are always standard, I guess, and that is that you either get Gen Air appliances or KitchenAid appliances, you get your gas cooktop, you get a, not a recirculating fan, but you get an exhaust to the outdoors, a dishwasher, obviously, a compactor, which is a little unique in our business, double ovens, microwave, side-by-side uh, -side refrigerator, uh, coil, coal or plumbing fixtures, and granite countertops. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Perfect for entertaining and preparing the holiday meals for sure. We want it to feel like home, like you did before. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. let's go take a look at the master bedroom. All right, sounds good. Well, here in the master bedroom at the end of a long day, this is a nice, quiet place to relax. It is. Even if your neighbor's playing their grand piano, we don't think you'll hear them. And whether they're above you, below you, or beside you, uh, we are hoping that you will not hear them. And, and uh, our tests so far prove that. Uh, if you want some fresh air, you can open your double-hung windows, a uh, place to hang your clothes, a big walk-in closet with uh, California closets. Lots of room in there. And uh, your master bath has a soaking tub, a shower, double vanity, and a lot of stone and tile. Beautiful area. This is a spacious room. It is. It's 15 feet wide and 17 feet uh, in this direction, so you have a lot of room for what I'd consider a major king-size bed with the size of that frame, a couple of armoires, some uh, lounging chairs, and uh, lamps, and whatever else. Nice place so to relax. The it is. Day. Beautiful. It is. So that is uh, about what I'd like to say. It's beautiful. I like the French door look here, too. Well, I want to thank you very much for showing us this absolutely gorgeous model today. Well, you're very welcome. And we thank the Cory Designs for their work on the interiors. They supplied all the furniture and 
all the design work. Mm -hmm. That's and a business right, just right below us here. They're right next to TCF. And so with United Grill downstairs, Muller Jewelry, banks all over the corner, restaurants galore. And a uh, grocery store. And a grocery store, and a movie theater, and a drug store. I mean, this is clearly a place where you can be at home, you can be entertained, you can do your business here too, and you can take care of your family and your friends. And you can walk anywhere, and if you can't find it here, you can take a bus to almost <laughs> any place in the Twin Cities. And it's all so right here on the corner is. of 50 of the brands. So. If folks want to check out a floor plan, the first person moves in the month in of July. July. Yes. But they can check out more information right here on the website at www.5000francedina.com. You've got it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Gene Holland, it's a pleasure mm -hmm. to see you. Thank you very Good much, Good luck Lillian. to your place. Bye-bye. Well, the city is making an investment in improving the quality of our drinking water. And here to join me are two guests to talk about this situation right now. We have Wayne Houle, the Director of Public Works, and we also have Roger Glanzer, the Utility Supervisor. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming to Inadina. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Really appreciate it. The benefits of quality drinking water. Um, we kind of take it for granted. We just assume that it tastes good all the time. That's right. Well, we're... Um, our mission within the Public Works and Utility Department is actually provide clean drinking water to the citizens of Edina, along with clean water that goes to our, our lakes and, and rivers and, and also efficient uh, removal of the sanitary sewage um, throughout the city. Mm -hmm. So you've been doing some studies to take a look at our situation here in the water developments and there's been some changes in laws. Tell us a little bit about those. Yep, the federal regulations like the uh, Clean Water Drinking Act, along with some of the other federal um, requirements for environmental um, areas as, as uh, um, initiated some projects with through the city to essentially um, filter, uh, provide better filters for the for the water system, along with uh, providing better wa um, surface water that goes off to the lakes and rivers. Mm -hmm. Identified a number of projects through that through those studies, and uh, from there initiated a rate study. And so from that study, you realized that you needed to make some changes. And in order to make change, we have to pay for it. So there's going to be, and there has been beginning uh, January 2007, a slight increase in utility bills, right? Yep, we're looking at about uh, um, from four to eight and a half percent for our water and, and uh, sanitary sewer increases, and then about a four dollars per quarter on our storm sewer rates. Well, it must be well worth it because uh, you're noticing some differences. I know you've been working on it. Yes. Uh, Roger, tell us a little bit about what are we gonna see for the money we're investing? What you'll see is uh, improved water quality and color and taste. Um, we're trying to um, blend more of our water so that uh, the wells that aren't filtered will look like the wells that are filtered. Okay. What exactly are you doing in the water? I mean, what are we removing or, or what's going on here? Uh, uh, the federal drinking water standards have lowered some of the um, uh, regulations for the um, contaminants that may be in the water. And what we're doing is we're going to remove those uh, so we meet the quality and we'll be filtering the water so that we're removing iron uh, also. Mm -hmm. And that'll of course improve the taste then as going yes, on. Will we really notice a difference, do you think? Uh, you may notice the difference, most people won't notice the difference. Okay. And you also need to use these funds to help improve the infrastructure of the water system. That's, that's correct. As we go through the city and improve the neighborhood roadways, um, we've been looking at or analyzing the, the, uh, the utility system and upgrading the utility system on an as-needed basis. And so you're going to be taking a look at infrastructure, you're going to be working on sampling and testing of the water. Yes. If folks have questions, because this will come up, well, if, if something's going on at home or they wonder, they have questions they want to ask you about it, what should they do? They should call me, and they can call me at uh, 952 826-0311. Okay, so uh, how long do you expect this work to go on? Um, this is, um, right now we, we've identified a five-year plan um, through our capital improvement plan for the city. So it'll take at least five to, to eight years or so before we're, we're back up to where we should be if with the federal requirements. Okay, so we'll have to have you back and see how it's going. Okay, Thank we'll you both happy. for coming out here today uh, and joining us on Inadina to talk about an increase in our utility rates. We look forward to the improvements in our water system. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thank you. Well, improving the quality of water is important and just as important as improving our quality of life at home. 
and there's a program to help you do just that. It's called Edina Unplugged. And joining me to talk about that are Bert Letter from the school board and also Cheryl Gunnis, the chair of the Community Education Services Board. Thank you both for joining us on Edina. Thanks for having us. Unplugged. Let's get unplugged. What's it all about and how to get started? Well, it started with initiatives that um, the, the school district felt were important, that there are, there are 40 assets, that um, the more assets that kids have, the, the better off they are for um, not participating in risk-taking behaviors. And um, through that, we, we developed Connecting with Kids. And in, in our Connecting with Kids initiative, we also then talked about um, an intergenerational dialogue where we brought in students uh, and various community members of different ages, and they talked about what, what things help the quality of life in Edina. And one of the kids came up to us and said that they feel that they are way overscheduled, wow. that they need to have some time off, and can we help them with that? Well, and you know, they are just children. I mean, you know, you have school, you have work, you have athletics, you have academics, mm -hmm. all these other activities going on, and families cuts into the family time. Absolutely, it absolutely does, and there's no time when when families have a time when they can be together and share dinner with each other or just chill out and have fun. <laughs> so one of the students came up with this idea, and you decided to go ahead and activate it. Right. And the first event was last year, mm -hmm. right? In Edina right. Unplugged, you set aside some time and you said, "We're going to get unplugged." What does that mean? We had the whole community rally behind us. We contacted the faith community. They agreed not to have meetings that night. We contacted the sports community. Coaches canceled their practices. Wow. The superintendent asked teachers not to schedule any homework. Um, and we came up with a bunch of ideas that families, things that families could do together. So they had nothing to do on their overcommitted schedules, which That's meant right. they had to do something <clears throat> at home. Mm -hmm. And so folks, what did they do? We asked people to tell us what they did last year. Some families baked cookies, they made pizza, they played board games, they did puzzles. Um, you know, families are different and every family sure. did something different, but sure. I think the important thing is that we worked really hard to give them an opportunity to think about in their family what would make sense. You know, it sounds so simple, but the reality is, is time does get away from us and mm -hmm. we change as individuals and our families are growing and kids mm -hmm. are growing up so fast, so it is kind of important to get a little face time and just set aside that time. We're doing it again this year, and it's happening on a day in the month of March. Mm -hmm. And basically, it starts at supper time. That's right. And when does it end? At bedtime? Bedtime, yes. But the concept is supposed to be But the concept lived on. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's really an opportunity for families to think about what's important to them and maybe schedule some family time on their family calendar before all the other activities yeah. get on there once a month or once a year, whatever makes sense doesn't cost anything, I would imagine. No, it doesn't cost anything. And, and as, as a committee member and boards and committees, you have a lot of time that you spend away from your family. This is one committee that we've spent a lot of time just planning to do nothing, which has been really quite a, <laughs> a, a challenge. Activity, and, but a lot of work to plan to do nothing. And it, it lands on a Monday, yes. and it's a second annual event to bring families together, and I think it's a great idea. And you'd like them to do that more often than not, so carry the behavior throughout the year. Right. And Unplugged has really been a hit so far. At least you, you received an award from the Minnesota Community Education Association, which basically uh, gave Edina Unplugged an award for Best Project in 2006. Right. So you must have done something right, bringing people together. That's very good. We Wonderful. have a great community that really supports the idea, and we're, we're hoping to make it even stronger. Well, that sounds right. like a plan. Where, where can we get more information or some ideas of some things to do when we're going to get unplugged? We have a website, um, edinaunplugged.org, and you can go to that website. and. It, um, some families choose to go out to eat at that evening, and there are coupons for um, different restaurants in the, in the community. There are activity ideas. There's research on how important this is to be unplugged, to, to give some time to your family. Mm -hmm. and, and the asset information is on the website also at edinaunplugged.org. Wonderful. And, and I imagine you can probably measure some results on this. You can get some more feedback from the families and, and the students and the teachers again and, and see how it goes and change it and, as it goes along. Well, I thank you both for, for bringing this program to the city of Edina, to the families, and, and to our students in the community. It sounds wonderful. Thank you. Let's get unplugged. All right. All right. Looking forward to it. Appreciate the FaceTime. Thanks a lot for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm Lillian McDonald. You're watching In Adina. And one of the things we like to talk about is public safety. And one of the things we'd like to talk to you about right now is theft from auto. And joining us to give us an update and some information is Chief Mike Satari. Thank you very much for joining us again on In Adina. I appreciate the invitation. Why theft from auto right now? I've been with the city for 29 years, and it has been a chronic problem throughout my career. But it is changing. The loss is increasing, uh, and there is a slight disturbing trend of it actually going up um, the last couple of years. So it's something we want to keep a lid on. And I think just with a couple basic crime prevention tips, we can help keep it, the crime rate down where it should be. You know, and I, I hate to admit this, but sometimes the theft from auto is almost an invitation from, from uh, residents. Uh, that's one of the biggest points I want to make. It is a crime of opportunity. And last year in our residential areas, 60% of the thefts, they didn't even have to break a window or force their way into the car. The cars were unlocked. There were valuables left in the car. So that's probably the main message I want to get across is uh, a car in a driveway at night is a very viable target. Uh, the criminals are looking for that. And Edina is a very viable target for that. So take a few basic steps, most important, get the valuables out of the car and make sure you lock the car. And we're not talking about just keys in the car left in the driveway, but also keys in the car left in the garage. Even though the door is down, uh, you know, if they get in somehow in the garage, then they have two opportunities. Yes, in fact, the uh, second week in January, we had a, a crime spree on the west side of the city, and there was uh, four cars that were stolen, a couple out of the driveways, a couple out of the garages, but in three out of the four, the keys were left in the consoles on the car. The cars were unlocked. You see, it's a crime of opportunity, and uh, they took advantage of it. You know, and, and I'm guilty of this. I've done it before. I just leave the, the keys in the car because it, it feels convenient. They're right there when I'm ready to go next time. But as you say, it is a crime of opportunity and valuables that are left in the car. But even if I tuck my purse underneath the seat or my cell phone in, in the glove box, is, is that just not going to work? No, the criminals have figured out that uh, with the size of valuables nowadays, they know where to look and they're more willing to break into a car if they see any indication. Uh, one example I'd give, i got two college-age daughters and uh, they come home and uh, I go out in the driveway where the car is and there's their backpack or their gym bag in there. What's the problem? There's no valuables in there. That's an open invitation to the criminals. They may take the opportunity to break in because they don't know what's in there but they'll take that chance. As long as anything is in plain sight, they're going to take the chance and try and get in there. So those are some residential concerns. Uh, what about business or commercial concerns with cars in, in parking lots? Uh, that's where we saw the major increase last year is in our business areas and also such areas as our parks uh, uh, where people leave the cars uh, locked sitting in the parking lot where they go for a walk and that. But that has increased. And the primary uh, target for that appears to be financial information. What they're looking for, main thing, is credit cards. Mm. Uh, they take, they're looking for wallets, purses, laptops, uh, and that's generally they do break the windows on that if they're in a public area. The tough part to address that crime is it takes about 20 to 30 seconds to break the window, get in, and get out of there. So it's very fast. It's tough to catch the people in the act. So we stress get the valuables out of sight and make sure it's locked. Or if you're going to take a jog around the park, make a plan, maybe leave your personal valuables at the club or take them home first and then go for the jog. That is one thing I stress is a lot of cars nowadays with the technology is the trunk release. A lot of them, they work even when the key is not in the ignition. People sitting in a parking lot, they'll see that you put something in the trunk. So you do have to plan ahead, get it out of, the, out of sight before you sit and park the car. What about recovery rate? Do you have much success at, at, at retrieving that laptop that may have been stolen or the briefcase? And, and identity theft is huge. Unfortunately, a lot, but there is some technology, technology advances, such as the automated pawn system. If people are using the pawn system to get rid of it, it's all tracked, so we've had some luck with that. Uh, but it's more through uh, a tip, someone calling in on 911 if they see someone suspicious and so forth, and actually catching them in the act, that's how we do recover some of the property. And I know you do have um, some safety tips for, for individuals and families concerning theft for auto on your website. Do you want to tell us where we can get them? And it's a constant reminder. We should also mention that theft from auto is not something that just happens in the city of Edina. It happens everywhere. So when you're traveling here or there or even out of state, you should probably be mindful about the valuables in your car. Yeah. And that is an important point. Is It's a metro area problem. Like I say, I've talked to many other departments, and it moves around. Unfortunately, there's no specific pattern. I can tell people what day of the week or what time of day. It's, it's any time. You have to be aware all the time. Uh, we do have some of the information I've gone over on our uh, City of Edina website. Uh, we have technical briefs. We have a uh, 
brochure on identity theft, which is related to theft from auto. That's what the, uh, the business areas they're looking for. So I would suggest they go to the website and uh, download that information. Okay. Well, I thank you very much for keeping us safe out there and for bringing your mindful tips. They're always a good thing to be on the lookout for. And with the weather, is going to be warming up pretty soon. People are going to have their cars even more wide open. So it's, it's good advice and food for thought. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate welcome. it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, spring is in the air, and right around the corner is a great big affair, and it's called prom. And there are a lot of young couples out there that are very excited to join in the fun and the fashion. And we're going to talk about prom and prom hair today on In Edina. I'm your host, Lillian McDonald, and we're very lucky to have representatives from three salons, all located at 50th in France. And joining us first, we have from the Julia Bretti Salon, we have Dominic, the stylist, and his model, Molly, today. Welcome to Inadina. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for coming. Show us the look and tell us all about it. All right, I'm going to touch base on a couple things here with the, starting out with the hair, is what we've been doing. A lot of high school girls, you know, about 10 years back, what they've done is always had their hair down. What we're trying to do is bring the trend back on to putting it up so they're comfortable, so it's not all straight up. I want to remember, it's not so pageant or wedding-ish. It's more high school fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've done a very nice mod type of a, a look here, using hair accessories in the back. And you can get creative with doing the hair accessories, one, two, or three. And accessories are in right now. Headbands, um, any clip-ins, yes. Now, now her hair was straightened for this. Her it's hair was easy straightened. Easy to care for? Easy to care for, a fresh new color. Um, we flat ironed it and set the top with Velcro rollers, brushed that out, and then put the attachable uh, clips in. Now one of the things that's really unique about this look is it's open, it's youthful, and it's classic. So we're kind of bringing back a, a little classic bit of classics. with a mod twist. And you'll notice with her dress too, we're kind of doing the twiggy look. A little bit of, you know, the knee exposed. So mm -hmm. yeah, kind of... Now your um, salon offers something kind of unique. You do a lot of computerized analysis. We uh, carry the JF Lazar Teague line from Paris, which is also in Beverly Hills and uh, New York. So yes, we analyze the hair and scalp to uh, you know, find out any conditions, why the hair or scalp isn't uh, working out for the client. If there's hair loss, we have vitamins and uh, product that's uh, specifically for. Wonderful. Dominic yeah, Molly, thank you very much for oh. joining us today on In Edina from the Julia Bretti Salon, making you look good and ready for prom because it's not too far away. New Reflections has a new look for us today, also at 50th in France. And joining us, Rashina, our stylist, and her model today is Robin. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you me. want to talk about the cut. It's all about the cut right now. Let's take a look. Yep. Uh, well, with Robin, you'll see that she does have a pretty heavy full bang and lots of short pieces around the face. So uh, what we did is we just kind of loosely curled everything, gave it that nice, soft, romantic look, pinned it back, gave her some height on the top, but still we're able to achieve a very romantic soft look with that full bang and the curls on the side. Also so. another open look. You know, what, what if you uh, come into the salon or anybody comes into the salon, they want something, but they don't have what you need to work with? Well, we do offer extensions now. So if you um, want this length or want to achieve this fullness, we do have extensions that we offer. So you can definitely achieve this length without having that length or fullness. Okay, so what's helpful for you? Bring in a picture or, yep. or talk it through and plan ahead? Yep, pictures always help. Uh, we do have consultations for extensions, so you can come in and we can discuss what look you're exactly going for, whether you need to do that full head of extensions mm -hmm. or just a few. Mm -hmm. Now you uh, use a beta products. Yep. So those are natural products yep. uh, on, on all of your clients, and, and they get a little extra special treatment while they're there, too. They do. Uh, with every hair service, we do offer a head massage, neck massage, and shoulder rub, also a complimentary hand treatment, and a complimentary makeup touch-up. Mm, that's a nice deal, so. especially during prom when it gets a little bit stressful, right? Mm -hmm. You need to stand <laughs> loosen up just a little bit, so you got a new look, be loose, and you'll be feeling really good for the big event. Um, you have a special going on right now if you book your updo early. Anytime after March 15th, uh, you can get free makeup application and a free Aveda li uh, lipstick, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. New Reflections, 50th in France. Thank you very much for joining us. Pull Out a Plum is not just a salon, but it also features a spa. We'll tell you about that in just a moment. First, we need to cover the look. And we clearly have a vintage look going on here. Joining us, stylist Martha and her model, Mackenzie. Tell us yep. all about vintage looks. Okay. Well... 
The dresses this year, a lot of them come out with more of an empire waist than a mid-calf length dress. So it's really romantic, um, a lot of flowing sheer fabrics. And for the hair, we kind of went back to a late 40s, early 50s sort of a style, only a lot smoother and more modern. Big rollers. Big rollers, um, not a lot of loose curl or anything, really kind of swept up and really clean and classic looking. Um, we added some hair accessories because those are really popular this year. And, um, and the earrings as well. Yep, and the earrings as well. Did that come from the boutique? You have a boutique. Yes, Tell yeah, us it a came bit from the boutique. Um, the boutique has a lot of work from local artists. Um, we also have handbags and um, necklaces, and we also have a lot of belts too. So we do have a lot of vintage style jewelry. So if I'm into the vintage look this year mm -hmm. for prom, I can come in head to toe and be outfitted. Yep. Great. Yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now you also offer a spa. Tell us a little bit about those services. Yep. Um, the spa we offer massages, facials, um, manicures and pedicures, and our sunless tanning. It's a natural sunless tan that doesn't, you know, it just doesn't use a bronzer. It just pulls your natural pigment up from your skin. Um, we have a special going on about that right now. It's when you book your prom appointment or updo, um, you get fifteen dollars off your sunless tan and ten dollars off a manicure. Wow, so great. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, absolutely very classic, very vintage mm -hmm. look. It's kind of nice to see those old styles yeah, coming it is. back, don't you mm -hmm. think? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ready for the uh, exciting prom season this I year? Am. I mm -hmm. love dances. Oh, mm -hmm. wonderful. Great. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming yes. and joining us. In thank fact, you. I want to thank all three of our salons for joining us to talk a little bit about the new looks and the fashions for this spring season. Looking forward to the prom season for sure. I'd like to thank all of our guests, actually, for bringing their very best on our In Adina program. Remember, In Adina is your show. It's about the people, places, and activities in the Adina community. I'm your host, Lillian McDonald. Thanks for watching. See you next time.